Hello guys, so we are now at Blockchain in Hamburg and uh, here we met uh, Fabio Kovicstein. Um, uh, he is uh, the founder of Luxo, uh, blockchain infrastructure for physical and uh, uh, digital consumer goods uh, solutions. And as well, he is creator of uh, ERC20 uh, standard and uh, ERC725 standard. Nice to meet you here, Fabio. Hi, nice to be here. So, can you tell us how did you get into crypto and blockchain? No, that's a, <laughs> that's a story I have already said a few times. Uh, I mean, how I got into it is I heard uh, 2013 about Bitcoin. Um, that was like before all the altcoins started, so I followed along all the altcoin wave, wave where I kind of like saw NEM and all the other projects uh, coming up, and then there was Mastercoin. And Mastercoin was quite cool because it used Bitcoin as, a, as an underlying blockchain without creating another uh, network. Um, then uh, 2013, uh, Vitalik had this idea about Ethereum and he also got inspired by Mastercoin, like building a more complex system on top of uh, a network. And <clears throat> so I followed this in 2014, I, I met the guys from Ethereum, or heard that they're opening an office in Berlin. Mm -hmm. I was based in Berlin. A few months later, we connected, um, and I, I joined the Ethereum Foundation because they had nobody really who could build like full um, D apps or like apps at the time. Um, and I could build single page applications because I wrote a book about Meteor Jazz, and um, that's how I you know kind of joined. I, I built like the, 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 the chat application with the uh, Whisper protocol, and then I built the Mist browser and. I worked on tools like WebBridges and um, yeah, UC20 and happened the same in 2015. Um, yeah, so that's how I got all into this. And how did you decide to start your own project? It was actually Marjorie uh, and me, we had this idea that um, we should create an ecosystem for these more lifestyle use cases, which includes also applications that are more interesting to the female audience because mm -hmm. if you look into blockchain right especially on this conference you can see it again it's just a bunch of dudes <laughs> it's just a bunch of guys here and uh, and then it was always about investment and what I really learned in, in, in Ethereum is like I mean you can do with blockchain it's just so much more you can do things that are far beyond finance you can do things that have to do with social media I think like the problem is that um, it's really hard to use for people blockchain mm -hmm. like it's it's very technical you have to understand the concepts I mean people should understand the blockchain concept but understanding necessarily keys and how this works uh, I mean I think this, people shouldn't you know really care about that and if we give them a user experience that hides the blockchain technology but gives them the power of blockchain technology that's when we actually get mainstream adoption that's when we actually get like a normal people or everybody using blockchain and that's when like this massive amount of people can start using it and really will become part of this ecosystem because they are like not afraid to use it and they are well able to do it, use it and willing to use it right so and uh, i mean this was the whole idea about like you know luxo is creating this like new blockchain just around these actually new users that will come and making it feasible which then also made it necessary to rethink the standards that we are using right uh, so rethink how tokens work also and especially bringing uh, in this identity to blockchain like blockchain based profiles or accounts mm -hmm. are the most important thing to make this blockchain adoption happen and how do you uh, how will you describe luxo just to the average user in a few words i mean the thing is you know i don't think in the future people need to know <laughs> what luxo is it's just a network that's under the hood uh, but I mean, it's it's. I mean, right now it's not the average user. Right now, it's probably more like the entrepreneur and the startup that wants to build mm -hmm. something in this new creative economy. Uh, then Luxo is the place where this new creative economy is going to happen. So when you want to do anything with like digital fashion, metaverse, creative things, um, social media on blockchain, then Luxo is the place where you do that. And so, what's your opinion about metaverse? Is it hype or do you think it has a big future? Uh, I mean, the, <clears throat> right now, meta, the metaverse term is a hype, um, but the idea is a very realistic one, and it, it will take years to develop because we need a, obviously we need a lot of <laughs> more standardization on open infrastructures to make a metaverse happen, right? 
Um, the idea of a metaverse is that you have like a seamless flow between 3D environments, game environments, also in the future AR when you can overlay things that's also part of the metaverse is just now overlaid over the real world. Um, and like being able to like transition between them using the same accounts, mm -hmm. right? Slash universal profiles, um, being able to uh, you know, take stuff from one place to another, being able to take your reputation with you. Um, th that's kind of like necessary. And obviously the real metaverse will come when we also have fully distributed, decentralized a, a 3D computing. Mm -hmm. So that these 3D worlds are not reliant on one single company's server infrastructure. Um, if you want to have a really massive multiplayer game with millions of players, where people own stuff and live stuff and like, you know, have a whole economy, you don't want this to be a single company like, uh, you know, like a uh, second life, for example. You want this to be decentralized. And then we will probably have many of those kinds of worlds uh, in the future and many kind of like, you know, places where you can hang out and live, work. Um, and VR is a big component in it, so this is this definitely going to happen. Also. And do you buy any NFTs or hold any NFTs? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Actually, I don't. Uh, actually, I have no NFTs um, because I think it's too early for that right now. Because if I buy now an NFT, first I would have a hard time managing it. It's like one of my random, you know, MetaMask accounts. Um, and second, also the whole identifiability of like the creators on of this NFT is like it's not there, right? On the blockchain level, there's a random key created stuff that I just bought. So, I mean, neither does, does this creator really cares about this address, and he just might lo might lose it or switch his ENS entry to another address. Um, or, uh, I mean, I think it's like it's. I would. I mean, I personally don't buy any NFTs yet. But if they would be issued by Universal Profiles, things that the creator will for long term care about. I would probably do that, yeah. So you work as well on digital identity stuff. Can you tell more about that? Yeah, I mean, I like to call it universal profiles. I like to call it uh, on-chain accounts because identity is always such a heavy word. Mm -hmm. And uh, with identity, people mostly think it has to be your passport data. It has to be something that, you know, it's like government certified, blah, blah, blah. And, and the thing is, that's not what identity is. Identity is actually a persona that you represent. And you represent a lot of personas, right? There's the, the Instagram persona, there's the Twitter persona, there's the gamer persona, there's maybe the persona you are in front of a government, <laughs> and they're just all personas. Uh, and they relate to you physically or not. Um, and I think uh, when it's about like blockchain-based accounts, it's about you know having these identified personas. You can also have obviously an anonymous account, and that's an anonymous, or as anonymous as like a public key that you have right now on any blockchain. Uh, but what it allows, and what the standard allows, it makes it actually easy to use and like long-term main maintainable. And why do you think it's uh, better to use, for example, uh, on-chain identity of uh, Luxor rather than, for example, MetaMask? Um, because there's no comparison. <laughs> the one is like a bike, you know, the other is a car. Uh, I mean, the one thing, I mean, the, the, first off, it's a standard. So that standard can easily work on any other chain. Right? You can like literally use the same standard setup on every other EVM chain and non-EVM chain. Um, so the thing is, MetaMask is more a representation of using just plain keys. Uh, this is the old way of how we have done it so far, but it's a stupid way. It's not the right way to do it. You shouldn't hold your assets on keys. It just makes them lose. You make them lose them quickly. So, I mean, the one thing is more a, a sophisticated setup of how a user account can work and can do the same thing like a key, but it's better manageable and it can keep track of the assets. It's received and it creates and so on. So it's just like a, it's a 2.0 version of how you do stuff on blockchain. And how about security of this, of storing assets? On smart contracts? Um, it's as secure as a key. I mean, uh, there are different controllers that uh, control this profile and there are keys or there are other smart contracts. Um, I mean, obviously it depends on the, on the security of those, um, how secure your account is, but you can also give different levels of permissions to all of these different addresses. Mm -hmm. So you can say, maybe the, the, the key that is in your phone that controls your profile doesn't have the right to add not, add not another permission. Mm -hmm. or change permissions of other addresses, but it can only execute. And maybe it can only talk to a certain port. 
the vault that you know and the worst is when your phone gets stolen the worst thing you, you know is like this guy can empty this one vault that you have there or wallet mm -hmm. uh, but you cannot steal everything uh, so you can like have different levels of permission which makes it more more secure more trustable and there's obviously you could even have a custodian service that has full permissions that can always recover your account and so on and so on. Many ways of controlling this. And uh, do you have any interesting partnerships currently of uh, Luxo with other companies? I mean, on the end, we are an open permissionless network once it starts and uh, people can build whatever they want. They don't need to come to us to do something. Um, we obviously, I mean, if you just look at uh, what the dematerialized uh, marketplace uh, published, uh, you can go to the universalprofile.cloud website and you can see like this called Lagerfeld, there's like all of these different brands. I mean, they're all like heavy dropped on, on Luxo. Um, and um, there's other things in works, but uh, we will talk about them when we talk about them. And so what's the use of the token in the ecosystem? So LUX, L-Y-X, the token is when the network is there, uh, the means of actually paying for transaction fees on this network. So it's the fuel of the system. It's the same like Ethereum and Ether. And can you tell us as well your future plans for development of LUXO? <laughs> Let me think. Um, so um, we're building this network, uh, that's, the, that's the, the big piece right now. Um, and it's working in its basic form, but we need to like fix some last issues. Um, then we need to run an audit, then we will have an, a public test network that people can then you know, test and we will make bounties for them to, to try to break it. And then eventually we'll all ma launch mainnet. At the same time, we build the standards and the tools and we make them easy to use and we already have, but we need to improve the documentation and we need to improve on those tools. Um, we are building a, a universal profile browser extension, we're building a universal profile mobile wallet so that people can you know, interact with these profiles in an easy way. There's other people who can build them in the future too, so there's plenty of people who can build like you know, different ways of controlling your profile. Um, we have to define a few more things, like for example how an authentication flow works and how an authorization flow works. Um, and then there's also apps we're building internally that we can't reveal yet and um, there's other things that will come. But it's, it's more like a, a journey, right? Like towards these things. Okay, we'll wait for new updates from you. <laughs> Thank you for interesting conversation. Thank you.